Ah, today is the 2nd of April. The second day of April 2020, we are in Finite Element Method, class number 22. Uh, last time that I left off, I covered the issue regarding the spurious modes, or in other words, non uh, zero energy modes for the finite element. And uh, we, we talk about the zero energy mode for the Q element particularly. So uh, I brought you into the code since we need to uh, make it a little bit a little bit more effective. So the input and output doesn't need to be inside the main program. And I uh, did some sort of little modification and fine tuning of the code I showed you last time. Uh, actually, I think the code and the lecture notes, um, the PDF file and the M file of the code is already on the Google Drive. So you can download and play with it or try to understand it because you might need to use it. Um, for now, uh, look at the code that we have modified last time. We, we had we had uh, a little headache in the subroutine that we used to write the input file. And I did the fast forwarding in the, the last video. So it doesn't waste your time on the screen. So I did like uh, 100 times fast forwarding and then it goes like doo -doo 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 -doo. okay so so don't uh, don't wonder what went wrong there's nothing wrong I did that intentionally so the time wasting part was sort of uh, scr um, scroll forward uh, very quickly okay uh, the 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 subroutine the function we use to to write the input file is the uh, mesh generator, this one, the reg mesh. Um, it, it shouldn't be called reg mesh, right? Because <laughs> it actually can handle the the non-rectangular matching like the triangular mesh. Anyway, that's just the that's just the the name of the function. I organize the the input of this function in a little a little just a little different way so i put the opt over there the opt is the option we have the option to do for if you put the opt to be one this is just for geometry visualization so the geometry visualization is for the uh, it's a process when you call, um how to say when you conduct the when you when you try to mesh when you try to identify the degree of freedom when you try to identify the boundary conditions either the force boundary condition or the essential boundary conditions for the supports um if you want you can write down the uh, a short piece of code to handle the spring if you want to put the spring in place but that is just a very minor thing that can be done in just a few lines. So uh, I, I, I don't have necessity to do that spring thing. Uh, okay, so this is option number one. And uh, since it is for the geometric visualization, it's going to stop. It, it will not write the input file because the zoom in a bit, I, I think I zoom in already quite a lot. Nah. Okay, if you want more, then fine. Then I give you a bit more for... Okay. Main update. Okay, is it good enough? Ah. So that's the first option. Uh, we use it for just visualization of geometry. The second thing is the option number two. 
Uh, option number two, once we are done with option number one, we have a look at the geometry. You might not like the mesh size, you might not like this and that, whatever. Something might not go right. Uh, so you adjust everything and then so you finish that visualization and uh, some admin issues you call this function again you're welcome yeah. uh, you call this function again uh, and you go for option number two the option number two it is exclusively for the file the input file generation so it's going to write the input file. It's not going to print out or show you the plot of anything. That's the option number two. Right, so basically work on number one, done with number one, execute this function again, and go for option number two. The other things are identical. So element type, nx, ny, hx, hy, and the file name you want to, to uh, store the information in. And it close all, it clear, it do the uh, uh, triangular mesh, it does the Q4 mesh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the thing is that if you scroll down a little bit uh, for each of the element type, you'll be seeing the if option here. Uh, so the if option, if the option is equal to 1, that means it is for the visualization. So for the visualization point of view, we're going to need to see the mesh. We're going to need to see the plot. But if we go for the option 2, then this part of the code will not be executed. So we're going to have the end map. But we will not use the end map and XY core for the visualization, which actually takes quite some time for uh, this code for the code that is running in Octave. Now, uh, element type 4, it goes in the same way. So you have the XY core of, of its kind. You have the N map for its kind. And you go for the mesh plotting and uh, option. If it is 1, then it will be executed. All right. And, and if, OK, number 8, uh, same thing happens. And if and uh, 9. So all of these, uh, I set it to uh, label. Uh, oops, eh, why is it? OK, and if I correct, oh, correct, correct. Uh, so I set all of these to label, label the node number just uh, for everything. Because, because if we want to visualize, then we will need to see the node number. And that's well, no need to make another if to account for uh, the needs like this. Okay, so the node number labeling is going to be, going to be turned on along with the option number one. Uh, if we plot the figure, and the what the last if over here. It means that the if the option is 1, then we just need to see the plot. We just need to see the geometry. We don't need to write the input file. So uh, the part below are just for the input file generation. So I just put the return here. Thus, the code will just stop here, and it will not go down to this part. But if option is number two, then it comes to this one. In fact, if the sh option is not number one, you, you'll, be, you'll be getting uh, all the way down to the input file writing. And now let's take a look at the input file. So we have the, uh, this is the input file I generated from the reg mesh uh, that I just modify a little bit. I, I don't want you to waste uh, the online time, screen time, watching me going through like uh, little bugs, which is a part of everybody's life. Uh, so I, I, I just, I just 
uh, prepare this and then you will see uh, that uh, the test uh, it includes first it is a file name uh, second this line it's a uh, info so uh, the program generates the the input file and we gonna look into this input file and we can how to say modify or you can put something in here for example uh, version uh, to 2020040820814 uh, whatever you want to write here or problem number one two three you, you you just just put it there just for as your note and that's nothing to do with the program program will not figure out will, will not detect anything because when you when i read i'm gonna skip this line element type you plug in uh, eight notes quadrilateral number of notes in total uh, that that uh well, the eight is plugged in actually at the at the rate match uh, input already, right? So the the input file here just just copy the E type into the uh, input uh, in the file here. Total number of nodes we have in this domain, we have it automatically uh, recorded out there. Number of elements we have in this calculation, x, y coordinates from the first node to the 29th node. In this case, that you have 29th node. The, um, uh, the x, y coordinate here, actually it looks just like the x, y core matrix we construct. So this is the data structure of the x, y core. And likewise, for the nmap matrix that record us the um, the nodal point mapping, uh, node numbering of each element. So I, I remove one line out, so it, it, it is not necessary so far for us actually. And uh, I anticipate that the, the calculation will not take more than, uh, we will not have for this code more than 100. 999 nine nodes, so I spare just three digits for all of this. And uh, okay, in maps in this problem here, we have the six elements, so we have the six rows of the in map matrix, and we have the eight columns in total. We have eight columns in, sto in total, uh, that stands for the Q8. And now I add these things so. Actually, these are what we will need for the uh, input generation before we run a program. I mean, I mean, run a finite element problem because we also need uh, not only just the information above. We need uh, first of all number of integration points. How many integration points you gonna need? You put in here. It could be either one point if it is one point integration that will be the reduced integration for the q4 uh, two points integration for q4 will be the full integration two points integration for q8 and q9 will be reduced integration and three points integration for q8 and q9 are associated with the full integration so uh, this gonna produce a bunch of combination however this is not accounted for the triangular elements uh, yet, but um, that, that is just a minor detail. I I think we can just just fix it. Um, somebody can fix it for me. It is just a matter of fact that we cannot go out and if someone have too much time, then go fix it. Okay. Uh, it is quite weird that. Uh, as I am locked down, I cannot go to the university. I wake up, I work from home, but I feel like I work harder <laughs> when I work from home. Because uh, as as soon as I wake up in the morning, then I sit there in front of the PC and prepare for the uh, streaming for all the equipments and all gears. 
and I think I I I gonna have like a second job. I can do the vlog editing, video editing, cause I I since I <laughs> I have done a lot of video editing in the class, then I I by chance know how to edit the video and put the sound, put the some sort of effect in. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. Anyway, okay. Uh, we put integration points in, so wherever you can put two, you can put three. But this is going to be the um, the input file. You do not need to mess with the main code. That's uh, that's the key idea. All right. And the thing is that you're gonna save this input file before before and then you can execute the the finite element uh, main engine there that means basically you shouldn't supposed to overwrite the input file you can just uh, keep uh, making the newer 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 input file uh, so you know where, or if you want to track back to the previous uh, input file um, sometimes you adjust something and uh, you don't like that you want to go back to the original version then okay don't don't be lazy then you come and make the newer version and uh, rewrite the file into the different name and uh, execute using the different file so you have the history of the input file and if you bring the old input file to execute then you will not get the different I mean results so you execute now and you execute again tomorrow uh, from the same given input file you got you you're gonna get the same thing okay and now and and it well it is good because well when you when you deal with the finite element problem you might change the number of integration points sometimes you put it wrong you come back you can track uh, you put the different element types you you have so many things going on here so keep it as a record that is a good policy all right and and then uh number of essential boundary conditions are the restrained restrained degree of freedom the restrained degree of freedom that means the support so whichever degree of freedom that we want to restrain we add up that number and how do we get it in order to get the restraint degree of freedom then I will uh, I think uh, I should rename this because uh, if I execute this it's gonna overwrite okay I rename it and then I uh, do I need to come? Okay, rec mesh. No, not, uh, not rec mesh, right? Who are you talking about? Where? Where were we? The taste. Huh? We talk about. Okay, uh, this one. Uh, the safe. Uh, safe and why is it getting smaller again? Okay, number of essential boundary condition, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't care. Uh, now I come back here to call the rec match rec match can I increase the size no I I cannot increase the size from this command window sorry about that and we're gonna call the rec match from the uh, in order to see the geometry first and what else uh, QA fine uh, maybe I have uh, five discretization in the x direction and three discretization in the y direction. So this is gonna look like a little beam. Of course, make it. But it, it it the thing is that it's gonna take time. And okay, just five and three, and that's it. Execute. So the figure is coming here. The node numbering is going on. That takes so much time. I don't know why it is difficult just to write the text in the graph in the plot. And MATLAB doesn't have this issue. Okay, there you go. Uh, we have the 
the discretize we have the domain first of all we have the domain we have the discretization and we have the node numbering going going on keep in your mind that these are the node numbering and as it is the node numbering if you want to enforce the boundary condition for example uh, this is going to happen over here right the number of essential variation and uh, restraint the list of restraint degree of freedom I put very explicitly D O F I want to emphasize that I am talking about the degree of freedom I'm not talking about the node number but what we see in the figure are the node number so it is not that ready for you to use it is not the instant noodle that you just put the boiling water in and then you can eat it up in a couple minutes after you need to for example if you want to put the pin boundary condition over here if you are going to restrain the uh, what is it the X and the Y displacement degree of freedom you have to put two right uh, if it is a pin then you have to two essential boundary conditions from this one you're gonna need to add up with other nodes if you put the essential variation at the other nodes and the 29 is associated with two degree of freedoms which are 20, 29 multiplied by 2 minus 1 turns out to be 58 minus 1 that is 57 and the uh, y degree of freedom is going to be 2 multiplied by 29 turns out to be 58 so we're gonna enlist 57 and 58 right I don't know how many as of now but then I'm gonna list it there so I have 57 I have 58 if you want to make it like just a beam um, we might just uh, put the boundary condition here pin and over there it is going to be the roller support so as this one is going to be the roller support what is it number 34 roller along the x direction that means you will not restrain the 67 all right 34 multiplied by 2 minus 1 you're gonna get 67 the x degree of freedom will not be locked we will lock only just the 68 i drop in the 68 One bad thing we found previously about the the degree of freedom that we apply well, for this figure we're gonna find that it is going to take so much time in order to to mesh if we have the big problem but uh, another thing is that well my point is that um, the mesh is is quite rough and it might not be a good idea so I, I I will do it this way let me change the match let me change the discretization and for time being this is gonna take quite so much time which is fine we let it run as a background we can continue and do some other things because if I if I if I finish everything's up with this one and then it turns out to be a sloppy stress plot and I don't think it is quite impressive for us yeah? we want to see a nice uh, gradient plot colorful one make us feel smart like uh, we are different from undergrad uh, people <laughs> uh, okay so uh, let me just do it this way let me add more discretization mm, first of all as we are going to just visualize the geometry yeah the number one is good it is q8 fine yeah keep using it that way five is a discretization in the x direction make it some better number what could be that 10 12 16 is that is that going to be a good idea um 
12. Um, okay, first of all, let's let's think about it. Mm, we're gonna have the beam, and we are going to make it like um, D beam or slender beam. Then, if it is the D beam, fine. D beam, twelve discretization in the. I, I just expect more. Twelve or sixteen. Uh, 16, 16, 16 by 4, well, not that deep though. The aspect ratio is about 1 to 4, not that deep. Anyway, okay, and then I let it run. I let it run, then it's going to take like forever to generate this easy thing. Again, free program, open source, what do you expect from it? Ah, so we come back and see uh, the input and yeah. So I spare this line and then later on we will plug in the number of integration point, essential boundary condition, restraint DOFs, and number of false boundary condition. Actually, we can look at this one because we are not touching it. We we change the name to test zero, so it it will not bother this one. Uh, number of false boundary condition, uh, like how many point force that you are going to apply into this domain, uh, will just just list uh, just list the num uh, just put the number first, and then you list. The thing is that when you want to apply force, you need two things: degree of freedom number. We need to know that which degree of freedom that the force is coming in and the magnitude magnitude that means you should account for the plus and minus sign right uh, so if we have the poi force apply in the x direction uh, or maybe opposite to the x uh, opposite to the to the x axis then you got to put the minus sign over uh, minus sign over here at the magnitude. So you list out the DOF number first, and then you put the space, and then you put the magnitude of the load. And then list it out, and the number of row you have must match with number of false boundary condition over here. Otherwise, the program will not pick up the entire thing. Oh, there you go. You get it. And um, I zoom this in. I think the problem is about the graphic user interface of the octave that it's just it's just slow that's nothing but just that okay so uh take a look at it um let me see if I can so well no, no not good all right and for this I think I just can open the and where is the test one? Oh, I I have not made the test one. Okay, so I execute again without calling the. Uh, all right, I I don't I don't call the plot, and it comes out quite quickly, and you can see that uh, we come up with the new input files. Uh, not files, just a new input file uh, without S. Q8, 233 nodes. Uh, we'll see. Oops. Oh, God, too bad. It just closed all the thing I had. Hum, I hate that. Close all. God. So I don't want to close. I still want to keep it. I cannot work. Ah, uh, boy. All right. Anyway, we have the test one in in hand, and we we can we can look at that. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So we need to visualize again. That's the thing. Hey, it should be bearable, bearable, but we will not wait there. Okay, we come down, we see a bunch of degree of the coordinates and we see the end map and the node numbers just pops up to 200 something, right? 
two thirty three. So you have two thirty somewhere around here, two thirty three. Yeah, at the corner. Uh, top, maybe the topmost right corner. Number of integration points. Well, we put the three because this is a Q8. Essential boundary condition. Uh, how many we can look at? Uh, it still takes some more time to finish up. List of the restraint degree of freedom. Okay, we cannot do it right now because we still need the plot there. Number of false boundary condition. Well, you can put in whatever you want. Uh, for example, if you want the two point four. Uh, as you test the beam, right? This might be used to compare with the uh, experimental results you have from the laboratory testing. So you test the beam, and generally for the beam, you're gonna apply two point loads, and you're gonna have two supports, and the beam will be divided into three equidistant lengths. Uh, so break it down into L over three, L over three, and L over three. So you have the two point force applying. The thing is that when you deal with the finite element, and when you construct the model, the load application you have in the numerical model should should reflect the reality of the physics. Uh, what I mean by that in the real physics you cannot have the very precise just one single point force yeah, that's just the example so somewhere around the load application you might need to uh, distribute the load onto more than just one node I understand that this uh, microphone is very sensitive and you're gonna hear like everything. You're gonna hear me swallowing the water down to my throat. That that it is that clear as far as I understand. When I when I edit the video I heard like oh that is uh, every single detail sound of <laughs> water coming coming uh, I'm zipping Water from my Yeti cup, I, I, I hear this sound. Uh, so let's look at the domain of our interest, which looks like just a rectangular domain like this. And uh, well, if I want to be like not, not too sloppy, I just um, do it like this. It's just going to be fast. Uh, for my shape, I blank, I, I unfill it, and I will add this. I don't like the default color. I change or something. Right. Okay, we have how many discretization? Four along this direction. PowerPoint is a very powerful tool. Um, it's not going in snap. Well, wow, why is why isn't it snap? Hmm. What? Why? Why isn't it? Okay. Yeah. There you go. And the uh, last one, there it is. Uh, here is our domain, uh, how it looks like. Um, let's just put the node number, a uh, node in a little bit. Believe me, it's not going to take much time. I think I can fix this quickly. Due to the nature uh, of copying, uh, well, 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 okay. I 
think I need more. Is that a perfect circle? I, I don't feel that it it is. Yeah, it is a perfect circle. Uh, soon. So, I need uh, quite a few of this. Ah! Wait. Boop, boop. Okay, and then I just. I, I don't need to. Uh huh. Let me move this in a little bit, and then I work hard and work smart. You should start with the work smart first, and then you work hard later. If you work hard at the beginning, that is stupid. It wastes your time. Make sure that you look at things from the bird eye views and then start working from that bird eye view picture and you're gonna reduce your load. Uh huh. And there it is. There's a way to make it perfect perfectly aligned so that is going to be there uh, 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 uh. <laughs> there it is ah, and then here it is uh, I just need to align this one eh? I just need to center this one to the yeah the edge and that is it that is just enough I don't care the rest uh, the the alignment the other alignment so the left one is alive it is flush with this edge and the right one is flush with this edge I blip and then this is like the course uh, teaching PowerPoint uh, distribute horizontally and there it is I just get it done in just a blink and align top so it is flush in one direction and how many of these uh, I, 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 I'll just need a few lines of this right this I group it and put it there there you go and copy and there you go and there it is Right? It is not back breaking at all and it gives you a perfect uh, quality of drawing. The thing is that you guys need to set your standard high. If your personal standard is not high your work comes out to be sloppy and that is one way to judge people in my view I will judge based on something like this so it is easy to differentiate the need people and sloppy people by just looking at one's work okay I, I drop it first I can come back and fix it later okay yeah there you go oh uh, okay perfectly it is not center yet Uh, 
it takes too much RAM or what? It's slow. Okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. Okay. All right. There you go. Now, uh, where we, if we want to compare this, uh, we 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 have so many possibilities, right, to compare this code. If you want to compare with experimental result, uh, that's one thing. If you want to compare with the numerical calculation, that's another thing. So for numerical calculation, for example, if you want to compare if this uh, is matching with the deflection you obtain from Euler beam theory, then you got to put the support right at the neutral uh, at the axis of your beam, right? So that's gonna be the support. If you have if you have the Euler beam theory. Uh, as the condition that you will check with because for the Euler beam theory you, you just assume that everything is carried out at the along the axis of the beam that's how it's being done if you compare with the numerical uh, with the experimental results in laboratory then it is not there, right? Generally, we don't put the support there. We put support somewhere around here. So at the at the bottom, there it. Where? Like this. The point is that in reality you cannot have that perfect point support and generally the 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 perfect point support is going to cause you the trouble the trouble i mean uh could be the singularity problem because you apply the uh support this way or even the point load by just using the the point force you'll be ending up with the singularities. Uh, this issue is, uh, it occurs when you have just the point. So it, it gives you like a very peak, very high uh, stress concentration and uh, at, at the location which is nearby and like the support. So you get uh, very high and maybe when you look into the deformed shape, everything just, uh, it's just absorbed in in the area where you have the point uh, force and point support. So many times in the finite element discretization, uh, the area around here has to be discretized. AC Varam, I think I I drop off. I I missed your question. You paused in. I don't remember which class, but I I didn't. I didn't answer your question. I, I tried to and then I, I talk about what something that was going on and I don't want to yeah, just come down to that question which is uh, not yet uh, relevant at that moment but I promise to to answer you and uh, maybe it is about something like this uh, the, 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 the different mesh size right I think so some area could be mesh uh, using the using the finer mesh, just uh, like this one. The thing is that it might not be done uh, explicitly like this. It might not uh, because uh, over here, if we mesh it down to something like this, we're gonna have a bunch more mesh, uh, a bunch more nodes uh, required in between, and we do not want to change the uh, how to say the uh, shape functions and we don't want to construct a new sort of element to handle this uh, particular sort of element for example you have the three nodes uh, you have quadratic in uh, quadratic interpolation in this line you also have quadratic interpolation in here and here but here you have like more than 
three points, so you will need like the higher order function to 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 interpolate the the values, and that is not the case because we will just use the standard sets of of elements. So maybe you just block out this zone, and then you just uh, mesh by you have a gradient of mesh size, so. Uh, on these sides, you have uh, quite a coarse mesh, and then you can recommend a program. When you use uh, the commercial software like Abacus and Sys, you specify that over here you have you you need this many discretization, and over this line you're gonna need this many discretization. In this line here and there. You want very very fine mesh. You just prescribe that over here. Uh, if you have two and two here, you might need five and five, eight and eight. Uh, so the the software is going to generate the mesh based on your demand. It might not be able to generate it uh, explicitly like your demand. So the mesh not is not going to be like the rectangular mesh like this. It will be a regular mesh. First of all, when you end up with the irregular mesh, you know that there will be some uh, sort of copy, copy, um, I, I copy, copy the whole page. There will be some sort of. Uh, then I delete this. Distortion, some sort of distortion, like um, as you want to uh, maybe this zone. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. You want this zone to be matched uh, in a different way than the one before uh, the other area uh, you you might have uh, more discretization mm, I just want to visualize and how it could be done mm, I just need to guess uh, what is going to be uh, you might first uh, Start having the mesh that goes uh, like this, and then uh, your element is going to. Uh, if you have the Q8, right? Uh, now, uh, your element turns out to be well, uh, the best way to generate the mesh is to keep the shape to be as much as possible identical to the original or the parenting element. The parenting element is now in the local coordinates and it looks like just the square shape because the extent is from minus 1 to 1 and minus 1 to 1 in the other direction. Uh, so that 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 is the requirement. Basically, the better, the more you can maintain uh, that uh, it, the, your element in into that aspect ratio, the better the the how to say the solution will be. So in the software they will report when you end up with a very very bad ugly element for example for example the element like this uh, I take it out if you discretize and some element turns out to look like this you don't you don't you don't like it Uh, 
turns out to be like this. So you know that your parent elements are not like this. It it looks like the square shape, and then you get like the strip. Turns out to be uh, not as good. Okay, so the aspect ratio like this. Um, generally, we 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 would like to maintain it to be below two to one, one to two or two to one. Okay, and the big number shouldn't be greater than two. If you have like one to more than two, then you you're gonna have the long element, long rectangular shape element. And the sensitivity of the strain it will be in just only one direction. Another direction will not be as sensitive as it should. Uh, so it's not, uh, let's say, equally sensitive uh, from the point of view of the calculation. Another thing, uh, the different sort of element that uh, you should avoid. You when, once you generate the mesh, you might bump into this, and then you see. Uh, if this is going to be issue for you, the the software will of course uh, warn you, warn you first that hey guy, this doesn't look good. Uh, I don't think this is a good choice for this criticization. If it is not good, uh, then how to do it? How to fix it? Let me let me talk about that later in a more a bit. Uh, this is another, let me wrap this up and then I talk about how to fix. This is another thing you should avoid. Huh. So the, what is this? By definition, it is a Q element, quadrilateral elements, stands for the element that has four sides, one side, two side, three side, four sides. The point is that the element like this, when you try to map your uh, parental element to the the real or the physical coordinates over here, it turns out to be this way. Uh, okay. We have something here in the parental element. This node here might be mapping to this node. So when we map the red point back into the physical coordinates or the x, y, it turns out that the red point is falling outside the actual x, y coordinate, which is, well, it does not make any sense, right? You are doing, running the calculations uh, in the domain, but when you map all the things to the uh, physical coordinates. It turns out that the integration point fell out. It fell outside the domain of your of your Q element. So the element like this will shall be avoided. And sometimes it is unavoidable. I I I think um, it depends on uh, the 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 condition for the mesh, of course. Ah, let's see. So how to fix this? It it pops up by algorithm. The thing is that you will not use your hand to match, or if you do, and well, you it's gonna be very very laborious to do. So the countermeasure to the problem like this is to uh, first of all you might need to just re just give the the different the condition for the mesh generator so you might use to say that this must be two discretization two discretization this side has to be 10 uh, for example i just give you the 10 uh, 10 and 10 so you 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 get some idea that if you want to squeeze 
you if you want to split from two to ten, that's gonna be like a bunch of um uh, how would I say a bunch of um uh, distortion. Maybe we shall just finish this part up. I just uh give you how that's gonna look like for the discretization of this. Uh, so if we need from two element to uh two discretization in here and in here to four discretization in in this side and this side. Uh, first of all, uh, this is done already. So we have quadrilateral element, right? One side, two side, three side, four sides. Each side you have the mid node and the corner node. Uh, so this is the first one. The second one, maybe it could look like this. Uh, so uh, one side, two side, three side, four side. You can see that uh, you have a really large distortion. Uh, one side, which is opposite, eh? it was supposed to be close, but now you have quite a big uh, jump. Like this side to this side, the uh, ratio is like greater than two. Uh, but anyway, it is not that, not like that rectangular shape. Uh, how about this side, this side, and this side? Uh, well, they were supposed to be close to the parallel line, but this is like uh, this is almost a straight line in the well, more than sixty degree uh, apart from this one. So here is the cost that you're gonna get when you change the discretization, uh, change the mesh size from the coarse mesh to the fine mesh. So the operation has to be done sort of gradually. 2 to 10 might not be possible. You might be doing 2 to maybe 4. Uh, that is realistic. And then you will need more space to change from 4 to 8, 8 to 16 or so. All right? But if the space which is given here is just very limited, then it is hard to, to go from large mesh to the small mesh uh, in just a short distance. I will give you some more. So we have one side, we have two sides. Uh, uh, this is going to be one side as well. Uh, one second. We need this side, this is original. It come from the, the other part that we cannot change anything. So we will need this line, probably. And you can see that uh, it it is sort of difficult to figure out, to make decision which one should be. Okay. Uh, and then we look into the issue and generally the mesh generator will not give you the perfect and uh, nice geometry so, uh, why is ah uh, okay uh-huh uh, okay so this side is coming from this, this side is okay, this side is okay, this side, uh, well, we'll see. Yeah. I think uh, eventually the algorithm uh, of the generator is going to take over this part. Yeah. We might not need to have this line, in fact, right? And, okay, you, you do something further, but your effort is just nothing more than trying to uh, reduce the size, the size of the element, uh, knowing that this side is prescribed to be big, and then you reduce down. Uh, maybe over here, I think maybe you we we don't need this. Uh, we can go with the the line which is going up, not necessary to be the flat uh, horizontal line like this. Okay, so it, it will be reshaped gradually until it comes to this point here where in 
instead of four, uh, two and two, that this size and it turns out to be like four and four. So you're gonna have more nodes. And when you have more nodes somewhere around here, that's what uh, desired because you have uh, singularities uh, going on, on in this site. And to cope with the singularity, uh, in reality, let me ask, we test the beam like this. What you see uh, the technician does in the lab, uh, it put the steel rod, circular rod like this, uh, and that would represent the conditions of the roller. It doesn't restrain the horizontal, uh, uh -huh, the horizontal uh, translation. Actually, they they're gonna put a little little rod to control. Okay, this is as small as possible. So these two little rods are going to be welded with the plates, steel plate below. So the center big rod is go not going to move. Uh, I just make it like this. Uh, yeah, here is the situation uh, we see in the lab. The point is that this is not touching your beam at only an infinitesimal length. It is not that small. Uh, okay, I see the question from Sivaram just pops up. I ask, finer mesh has higher nodes, coarser mesh has fewer nodes. If then, what about the connectivity issue between both elements? Well, we 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 just gradually reduce the the size of elements, and then we cannot. I told actually I I covered this uh, when I start talking about the uh, the issue here. I think it, it it was covered already. I told you that we are not going to add more nodes on this side. We're gonna keep it, but then we're gonna twist. We're gonna distort the element so it's no longer square. It will be like a tepasoidal shape. It will be it will look irregular like this and then we keep distorting it and then get the smaller and smaller size until we, we come down to the point where we need more number of nodes. From there it is like a transition. So from the transition zone you, you cannot you cannot add more nodes. You just keep that node but you change the way the element is matched. Now, I uh, come back to here. So is it like just one infinitesimal point that uh, the load is actually applied, like uh, this? Like this, okay, is it just that point, the real point force that extends over the region which is less than, shorter than, smaller than one micron. Uh, is, that, is that possible? In reality, there's no such thing. When you put the boundary condition like this, well, you, you might feel like it looks like the point force, but if you zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom in, it is at least a few millimeters. Maybe one or two millimeter for sure if you zoom in and check into that, okay? So this area can be deformed. Uh, well, this is, uh, it could be concrete, it could be steel, but once you have the singularities, well, at the first moment that the beam touch the support, of course, that is the direct delta function. You have infinite, uh, infinite, magnitude of stress and then the redistribution of stress is going on so the dent occurs so the material there uh, might form the dent and the dent will help uh, the stress redistribution not to be congested at a very small area so it expands out a little bit such that it is uh, possible to to be handled by the the 
the material. Yeah. So likewise for the finite element analysis, if you model it using just one single point like this, you might question me uh, in the computer method class we don't see that much uh, because the the 1D line element is actually the more like the macro element. You, but when you look into the the continuum element like plane element like this, it is coming down into the the micro level. So you will see the singularity of the stress and some sort of very highly concentrated deformation in just some area, okay, Con congested in just some area. So you bump into that problem and the resolution to that is like you will also need to prepare uh, some sort of thing like this. So you give it like a non non concentrated. You have you give it some finite finite length of the support. Eh? It does not need to be ideal just like the well in the numerical analysis exercise. Uh, for this one, uh, if you want, you might just put it this way. This is not the snowman, okay? This is uh, summertime, so I'm not trying to draw the snowman for you. No Santa Claus, nothing. But I put this one, the triangular, which is the pin connection there to restrain against the X, but I do not restrain these two points against the X. So I, I actually, I do not want to create some sort of tensile or uh, stress in along this direction because if this one is restrained, this one is restrained along the X, then you gotta expect some strain there. So I don't restrain it that way. Well, on the other side of the support, then I can put like the triple circle. Okay, so one, two, three lined up uh, together. So that could be a better way to enforce the the boundary condition, and we are not going to we will we will be at least uh, f um, we will have less problem about the singularity. Likewise, uh, for the force, you will also need to discretize this area using finer match and you give the you can prescribe the condition for the finer mesh uh, generations in this area and this area there so instead of one single point force concentrated over a given node you distribute it out to the side nodes such that it still uh well looks like the direct Delta, but uh, you have some something that uh, gives you the the simulation of the distribution, not to be the uh, uh, not to cause the singularity. Okay. Now we come down. Uh, to here to okay talk about this and then let's talk about the problem we are doing so we don't have that many nodes I think we can just we, we, there are several approaches the approach that you use money or resource to fix the problem you just discretize the whole thing uh, using the final match and then this area will be fine of course uh, because the the entire thing turns out to be the fine match or you can just do it uh, zoning and 
and control, do the mesh control. Uh, that's another possibility. Okay. Uh, for our sake, we are going to just use these two nodes. I know that it is just uh, quite far from from this center node. The, the 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 support is not going to extend to that far, but uh, this is just uh, the exercise we can can do in the class. So don't worry too much about it. I, Edit, no fill, and center it there and there, and I group them. Where's the group? Group, okay. Mm -hmm. It's not center. So I have a few more is here and which is here okay and I take this there okay yeah, there it is so let us do it this way uh, Regarding the load, we're gonna put it here and okay, let me count first. I want to make sure that it is perfectly symmetric. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Well, where were I start counting from here? So the total discretization was, uh, well, I don't remember. Um, uh, 16 uh, okay so in span is uh, 14 and then I gonna have 1 2 3 4 uh, okay 1 2 3 4 oh okay so this is perfectly symmetric now um, then I can just put some little loads over here and there so if I intend to have 100, I can uh, drop some part off uh, around this nearby zone, uh, giving it like uh, about 20% of the total uh, to spill out. I'm not sure if there is a rule of thumb number to to con to to distribute the load out, but uh, if it is far far away from this one here then you shouldn't distribute like a big fraction out there right uh, but if it is a very fine mesh around this point here so you can give the bigger proportion to the node uh, the nearby nodes so that is up to the discretization the smaller it the smaller the mesh size is the more proportion of the load that can be distributed outside so it you can do like equally distributed like uh, you have the pi force equals to 100 and then if you divide it into two uh, into three uh, into three uh, nodes then you just divide by three that is also possible and if you want to justify if this is done in the right way, you can run a little parametric, strat parametric study. So the parametric study I mentioned is about something like this. Oh, no. uh, so you can compare uh, by using the different proportion, uh, this one with uh, two little things and maybe the three uh, equal size apply over three nodes, uh, over three nodes like this, 
Ah, well, there it is. So you can compare uh, this case and this case if you see a bunch of difference or significant difference or not. The difference will be only well it is very local it and it will be around this zone only when you come to the zone that is far away from this point lord here about maybe two or three times of the dimension here then you you will hardly pick up the the difference between the different fashion of uh, load pattern but it is always good to cross check yourself of course because uh, Finite element is not like uh, just the well, you just don't follow any cookbook, and you are going to end up with the the base calculation. It's not working that way. Every single model that you construct, you need to test it. So if you construct you're done with it you got to test and check the at least first the mesh sensitivity uh, you see if the mesh should be smaller and smaller and smaller or if it is enough to go to for this small right that is uh the check you 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 need and many as many other aspects like the application of the load the boundary conditions and many more when you deal with the uh, non-linearities and which which actually to, uh, is going to be the case because you 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 have to play with the uh, non-linear or inelastic material behavior that's gonna happen for just a simple the beam like this uh, tested under the the load pretty much like this you you're gonna end up with a lot of headache you can try you cannot get the simulation done uh, very nicely in your first effort. And uh, my students spend like uh, how many months? Uh, I think roughly three months to to get the software to get to understand the software properly. And we check, we correct piece by piece, point by point. Uh, something is not good there, not good here. Okay, it is not like the industry that you just model broop, and then hit run. Broop, and then you get the result and report that result to your client. Uh, actually, you have a very high chance. Actually, let's talk about the chance at getting things done right. The chance of getting things done right, in my view, if you have no experience in FEM, if you have no idea about how to check all of this, uh, first of all, zero experience and never take this course the likelihood to get things right is is well only the fluke so it is like one percent uh, I, I I think it is just that and okay finish this course you might have a chance to get things done right uh, it, it could be close to 50 percent but I still think that it is only about 30 percent 20 to 30 percent to get things done in uh, so right uh, so the point is that you're gonna still need uh, some experience to get all of things done right and that's gonna be a lot of my time sitting with you and <laughs> checking your uh, well, the problem like point by point sometimes it is not your error sometimes it is the the interface with the software, you you might not understand the software, the intention of the software. Sometimes it is embedded, sometimes it's carried out automatically, but we don't want it. Okay, so many many things we many unwanted things in the software that you might get it, and it 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 is ex executing automatically without uh, noticing you uh, you you don't have the knowledge that it does it that way so it takes time to be a pro in the finite element business uh, it is not just finished a single course and and things will be done right you need a lot of logic to <laughs> to justify your work okay All right um uh, so don't 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 just don't just believe the what comes out from the software. 
if it is that easy, then we have we're gonna have a pro finite element uh, people around the world, millions of pro finite element engineers. And when things are wrong, it's wrong like the order of magnitude. It is not like the it is not like the analysis that you used to play. Okay, uh, now the one here, I think we get some idea and what's gonna be done. Uh, so I will put this here. What should we try? Uh, maybe we put the support over here, 234, all right, uh, for this one. 234, so let's take a look. Uh, number of essential boundary condition, condition we do not have yet in our mind but we know that 2 and 3 and 4 2 will be restrained against the vertical uh, direction uh, displacement so 4 will be restrained and what for number 3 x will be restrained so number 5 will be in there number 6 correspond to the degree of freedom for the node number three in vertical direction is included and number four it stands for the number eight degree of freedom so over here we have roller we have pin and we have a uh, roller there just right next to okay and for the right hand side the support is going to be at 30 31 32 so first of all, if we talk about 30, that we talk about 60. If we talk about 31, that means the 62, and 32, that means the 64. Okay. So in total, we have the boundary condition. Uh, we have the restrained, restrained degree of freedom equals to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go, you hit 7, put in there. Uh, here's your input file. And then we talk about the false boundary condition. So for the false boundary condition, uh, number of false boundary condition, we have no idea yet about it, which is fine. And uh, we know that the force is applied at the fourth node. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, uh, fourth discretization, fourth element, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there it is. Zoom in. We have the node number 212, 211, then 213. 212 is the center one. We will give the big amount of load. So we'll, we'll see. The 211, what is the degree of freedom there? 211 turns out to be 422. 212, it is 424 and 213 426 the two 422 we have the negative right because the going upward is the positive the load applied to the beam was supposed to be pointing downward uh, that shows the negativity if at one zone like this is going to handle let's say 100 I don't know what about your unit. When you use this code, you got to make sure that all units are consistent. If you use the E, like uh, it, it comes from the E. So if the E, um, you use Mega Pascal, you got to convert okay into the Newton per square meters if you want to use meter for the length scale and the force scale being the Newton okay so you're gonna have like uh, whatsoever mega Pascal you take that that mega 10 to the my uh, 10 to the 6 uh, uh, or E is supposed to be giga for 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 um, uh, what SI unit like steel mm -hmm. Okay, so the giga Pascal then 10 to the power of 9 multiplied by 200. That should be in. You do not just put 200. Alright? Because the code does not know anything with you. It does not know anything with... Uh, oh, 200 is going to be the giga Pascal. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm smart. I'm 
octave chord. You don't need to write anything. I will understand that from you. I can guess your mind. It's not going to happen like that. So, if you go with Newton, if you go with meter, then go along like this. And the dimensions then has to be in meter. So the x, y coordinates are, go are going to be given in meter, right? Uh, what else? Force has to be in newton. If you apply kilo newton, like seven kilo newton, you cannot just put seven. You get to put seven thousand newton. Nah. Because we are not putting like hey one hundred kn. You put this in, you know, the program will not understand. What is a KN? Well, but the point is that, okay, in total, at a location, we're going to have 100. So we're going to break it down into, uh, let's make it 10 minus 80 and minus 10. There it is for uh, left point. So we zoom out. Zoom out, zoom out, and back in another time. One, two, three, four, which is this one. This is uh, from counted from the support. One, two, three, four. So what is this guy? Two twenty three. Okay. Uh, the 223 is the 446, 224, 448, and 225, 450. That's going to repeat in the same way, so the load is going to be symmetric. Uh, minus 10, minus 80, and minus 10. There it is. One enter and number of false boundary conditions equals to six seven. Okay, that means our code is so ready to be used. Now we come back into the um hum hum input read. Okay. So the read input here, we actually made it from the last time, and uh, we are up to the end map. Uh, we have uh, some few more things going on, so the integration points. dot 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 coming down and int has to be in and some other things are coming in well so we get end map uh, it's just done over there number of integration point And we clear out the line, so we have dummy equals to f skip line. How many times we want to skip? Uh, we get the f id of course, and probably one line, right? The data structure suggests that yeah, we're gonna clean this up. So just one line skip. One, oops, no, no, okay, yeah, like this, and then dummy is equals to uh, f get line f i d and yes and n i n t is equal to string to num of the m m y That's it, NRNT and nobody else. The next thing is the okay, the number of integration point, number of essential boundary condition. Uh, what did we call that thing? 
number of essential boundary condition uh, in well, N B C N I guess. Uh, B C D F. Okay, why? Okay, we just read it. Uh, we just read it. Mm hmm. Number of let's say restrained restrained D O F and yes home D -d 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 N B C N so I get the uh, N B C N put in there. And then done with NBCN, I will copy this part here and paste it in there. Uh, this is the list of restraint. Eh? List of restraint DOF. Okay, so one line skipped, and it's called BCDF, I think BCDF, the boundary condition degree of freedom. In there, we use the BCDF, and the data structure is like the column. BCDF, um, we need just one, and... Uh, N B C N. So it is N B C N. And uh, like this. A. Why is it dummy, comma? Dummy is going to be just scalar. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, previously this dummy is uh okay, like this. Uh, dummy is a uh, matrix array. Mm. N map not N map N B C N not B C D F uh row number I Column one only equals to dummy, and that's it. Oh, I feel tired. I think I talk too much. <laughs> uh huh. So I I just collect all those the uh, collect all of this in, and that's gonna be possible over here. Done. Okay. Next part: number of false boundary condition. Number of false boundary condition. I just copy from here. Let's say apply force again. The dummy, dummy. What's gonna be the name of this? NFRC, yeah, as stupid as it could be. NFRC. That's why this course is not listed for the children under 18 because there always be some <laughs> strong word. <laughs> NFRC, okay. What else? And that's is going to be the list of apply forces. Okay. What is the name of this guy then? Ah, this is going to take two rows, and I must. I got to skip two.
for sure this is N FRC. I call this one DOF force DFFC. DFFC. Degree of freedom force. And FRC comma two because it is it has these two. Uh, two it is a two dimensional array. For I equal to one to NFRC NFRC Dummy get line okay FID and there you go and dummy right now is going to be the array. It is not just a scalar. And what is that dummy? Okay, it has just one. Uh -huh. And this one is uh, the FFC. Thursday, I, al I, I always glad that it is the last day of the week that I have to teach. It takes so much energy uh, to wake up in the morning, prepare things, and then teach. And teaching is like the using a lot of brain because the teaching is not coming from uh, me looking at the notes and copy the notes down on the iPad or copying copying the notes down uh, something the code uh, down to the octave all the uh, French uh, <laughs> subway eat French um, well oh anyway <laughs> I wasn't supposed to <laughs> to give a free advertisement to anybody who never really pay me for uh, for the ads <laughs> you cannot go grab subway this this time all right okay come back come back the ffc uh i this was supposed to be this right actually it should be the same as yeah this data structure so i colon yes oh you done with apply force, right? Uh, you, there you go. This is the read. So I think I still think that it is a good practice to, well, if you come, you greet, you leave, you also say goodbye. Uh, we do the proper close closing down of the part here and that is then I'm gonna execute and check first if this code here is working well before I integrate this with the integrate this with the main code so we'll see Uh, and mapped and N I N T B B B that is F N M needs to be uh that is what T E S T test one dot text file close it and boom ah <laughs> oh it generally hits uh, the the bug uh, this time it is quite strange that we don't get hit by the bug but well this is just a stupid short piece of code so <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be proud uh, it shouldn't be proud it's nothing. Everything looks just right. I transfer the information down here precisely. Uh, six force boundary condition, seven boundary condition. Well, okay, it is not listed out. Huh? Well, let's check. We have NBCN. 
but we do not have the B C D F there. Okay. Yeah, so we need all to be listed out. The FFC. Oh, okay, okay. I think I think I know it. This one has not been. <sighs> MBCN and uh, BCDF. Okay. So it reports the BCDF. Huh? Four, five, six, four, uh, even number, odd number, odd number stand for the X. Do you hear the sound from my stomach <laughs> through the microphone? If not, that is better. I don't want to clean it out. Uh, five and six means a uh, note that you have the pin support and the eight is a roller support. So that looks good. And these three are even, all even numbers. And they... They are all rollers, so it looks good. Number of boundary conditions look good. And number of integration points uh, equals to 3 looks, pro well, just consistent. Force is there. Everything is there. Then we can get to use this input file. Oops. This is not the input file. This is the command window. There it is. Okay. So uh, now it looks good. Huh? And uh, using this is going to be quite uh, easy for you. Then we come back to the main. Uh, this one that we, you actually can can turn on, turn off the, uh, what? You can turn on, turn off the color plot and all those things from inside the test uh, input file. So. If you just write the interface a little bit to just pick up a yes, no, on, off, something like that, and, and shoot it down into here and make it like a condition. So the, the, uh, the, the control could be from the input file. Uh, it is Thursday. That means you have earthquake after this. I don't think you're going to have energy to check anything. Uh, if you have clear all like this, it's going to clear your file name. So you're going to bump into the, the bug first at the very first line. Okay, so I need to remove that clear all beforehand. Uh, now, let's see. Element types. We don't need it now, right? Because it is coming along in the file name. Well, so first of all, let us call that input function that read. And there it is. Yeah, it's, it's got to be called this way. Read. The input file. You get NNDE. Where is NNDE? You got to remove it. Because it's going to be redundant. You take this NELE -E out because it is coming along. X, Y, Co, and N map from the old mesh generator. Well, we don't need it because X, Y, Co, and N map are here. Element type is also provided. Number of integration point is also provided. Uh, the Elastic properties, we didn't provide it out there if you want. If you really want to make 
the different material properties in uh, for for one to one element then you can prescribe along with the end map here end map you give the first uh, eight data eight first four first nine or first three for the node number and then you can make like the additional columns like the elastic modulus and Poisson ratio on the back so you can you can tie it up with the end map or you can construct another matrix and you call it like the element property so for element properties if all the elements are having the same e and the same Poisson ratio then it is just the column of e and column of Poisson ratio okay two columns uh, with the same number uh, you can do it by just copying you you go to Excel and you copy everything like this so uh, if you have a hundred then uh, 100 is the elastic modulus Poisson ratio oops oops uh, I don't remember the hotkey for this. 0 0.2. No. Control Enter. Uh, you get this. Copy. And then come to the editor. Uh, I don't want to mess with this one. I, I come down here and then paste. That's it. So you can use Excel for this little help and now you can make it like the element properties sort of thing. So the dimension of this array number of row will be identical to the number of elements. Huh? Element number one, number two, three, four, five, okay, you just key in. And this part here cannot be automated because it is the input it, it, you, you you just need to give what you want so it cannot be automated you can tune put the number in Excel and then copy and paste it there okay so we are actually capable of dealing with more than one material what do you want do you want to do it that, that way I think it looks looks better also so the test like this now I'm gonna put the uh, actually it could be done this way uh, in map and then finish this and then we come to the next line which is uh, going to be the element properties and then I have the big matrix of element proper element properties uh, paste down here and let it read huh? EPRP and then we come down here so we need to construct the DMAT every time but it is okay so why not yeah that's a good point why not EPRP element property elastic property and then we put the label uh, we yeah we note it down a little bit EPRP is the elastic properties of elements to make it precise individual individual elements Uh, generally on an individual element or individual elements individual mean one single particularly individual elements. whatever okay no time to figure out the grammar and proper English uh, maybe note it down NLE describes it NINT EPRP XY core means a nodal pi X Y coordinates and what else? 
E type okay already and N D E and N D E means the total number of nodes in the calculation. And what else? Uh, well, 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 N map, N map. Uh, never explained this before. The nodal point mapping to elements. And what else? N map X Y core. E type is up there. N E L E N N D E. N R N T is that N B C N is the number of essential boundary conditions and the B C D F is the uh essential boundary condition degree of freedoms uh, and FRC means the number of force application application and what else the FFC uh, DOF and the corresponding force magnitude. Okay, and what else? EPRP, uh, elastic properties. Oh, did it already. Actually, we should, I should. So it is in the sequence. Uh, first start with an NDE. Cut it, paste. And then an ELE, and then element type. And then the XY core. And then end map. After end map, I go to NINT, NINT, NBCN, BCDF. There it is. Yeah, beautiful. F and M. the input file name Whew. 57 running out oh. still half an hour before the class the next class I uh, so tired uh, talking continuously for two hours Well, it's fun. I, I, I just realized one thing in this morning that uh, if I start the class at 8, that means in some country, for because some of you are, are back home, right? Uh, so, uh, for example, if, if some of you are back home in India, then 8 o'clock in India must be something like 6 o'clock or so, or even 5 8 in Thailand, might be 6 or 5 a.m. in India. It's too bad. Okay, so this geometric information has to be removed. We don't keep this boundary condition. Restrain degree of freedom. This is taken out. Apply force and apply pressure. Rigidity matrix, this is something we need to uh, move from this point here, move it out. Because if we are 
flexible enough to handle more than one material, then this part of the calculation has to be brought into under an ELE, under this loop, because this information is changing with the I uh, element number. So this has to be moved uh, over here. What is it? C eta, uh, you initializing the the initializing the uh, Gauss point coordinates and initializing the uh, what is this? The system matrices. matrices okay and this is the loop over elements um, okay and and this is quite simple the finite element software we are making here is just the uh, kindergarten one as this loop is just the shallowest loop uh, possible actually if you run dynamic analysis this loop will be encased inside another four and that should be the four of the um, for the time integration so it is for each time step and you gotta solve the finite element solve the equilibrium at each point of time uh, using the time integration techniques that we're gonna cover later after this. Uh, once we finish all the structural elements, we're gonna talk about the time integration scheme, of course. But that's gonna be another four. And if you do nonlinear, uh, if you deal with inelastic material, then you have another four. That is going to loop over the procedures over here until you get the convergence. And you can see that the for for the dynamic, it could be like a million uh, time step. For for the inelastic, inelasticity could take you well six seven iterations. For for the uh, and uh, this elastic part here is going to take you as many elements as you have. So you can guess how painful uh, that's going to be for you when you when you have the the dynamic nonlinear dynamic analysis so i say that this is the kindergarten level finite element code because it is actually there are possibility to to make it more rigorous and more complicated i think i said so i uh thought of like what disappointed you or uh, make you make you feel like huh is this just a kindergarten level code <laughs> uh, PhD level code is going to be uh, a bunch more anyway the as far as you set up the logic in your brain uh, nicely properly then uh, it is it is not that that difficult look at this what do we have left to do um, I kind of lazy tired uh, let's see ah, first thing this one could be easiest thing to do fix this one first uh, generates eh? Construct, constructing, constructing F sys. So uh, for i equals to one to force n f r c as simple as that n f r c. So we have this many force to plug in, and F sys what 
is going to be the uh, n. Um, no, is it a fourth? Is what? Whoa. DFFC. Okay, DFFC. You need to get the right point to drop in. So DFFC. I comma one. The first comma is a degree of freedom number. This is going to comma one because F six has just one uh, column, and then uh, this is equal to the F F C I comma two. The two is the fourth magnitude, and that's it. N four. You don't need to do F six equal to F6 itself plus the FFC because uh, we are not going to have anything added up on top, right? Uh, so, and I can remove this. Ah. Next part is the enforcement of the boundary condition. The boundary condition is given uh, BCDF. Yes, comma a. What is the a? A is a temporary or something? Or oh, just dummy? You don't use it, right? So it sorts out uh, B C D F. Okay, and then uh, we actually do not have to deal with or touch this because it is uh, properly. Uh, properly done already so it will just take BCDF and BCDF is coming from the input file that's just the only difference we have it does not come from the code it is read, read from the input file and then transferred to here and then it's being used over there okay so we solve the matrix uh, this part here can be more elegant the displacement is equal to inverse of k this time f this the point is that this is the lowest kind of solver the, to perform, to really perform the inversion of the cases. And this is very resource consuming. Um, you, you, you will prefer the, the better solver rather than the inversion because you know the inversion is, is a very time consuming part. So generally, the the code might employ the LU solver, upper and lower triangular solver that is a uh, very systematic way uh, to solve the linear equation like this. Uh, it could be the LU decomposition, uh, etc., or just the sparse solver for the finite element purpose. Generally, the zero is the bunch in your stiffness matrix so we just disregard the zero that makes your storage for the uh, entries in the matrix uh, it's going to be like um, several order of magnitude lower especially in the big problem it saves a lot of your time and enhance the problem size to be bigger because if you have the given size of RAM, then you can explore into the the bigger uh, the, the 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 finer mesh. But we are not doing it here. If you want, you actually that's a lot of thing to explain for the sparse solver. But I I S O L V E R solver. Uh, could be improved a lot of improvement can be in here and that's going to take you hundreds lines of code in this just these two lines uh, just this one line here it could be better but that's going to take a bunch more and you're going to link uh, the code in MATLAB to the uh, object file compiled from from Linux system. Well, that's that that that's a bunch of thing you got to learn. Uh, so I, I I don't think that we 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 gonna cover this part here. Okay, 
Now the boundary conditions uh, get done, 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 done. We only have the. Why is it so? Okay, constructing F sys. Okay, so we only have to move the D mat in there, and why don't we just do it now? So cut and. Well, but before we do that, we need to know the structure of the E properties. E prop. The E prop told you the I, the row number, stands for the element number. And the first column will be the elastic modulus. The second column is going to be the Poisson ratio. So we're going to go with this protocol. And I'm going to paste it. Uh, rigidity matrix for whatever. If you go for the plane strain, plane stress, and here initializing element matrices. Now here format indent code. Blah blah. There is no such thing, the EMOD and PRTO. So EMOD is equal to and PRTO is equal to. Equals to what? Equals to EPRP. EPRP of what? Of I. It is the element I. And yeah, there it is. EPRP uh, I comma 2 and then you transfer the Poisson ratio and elastic modulus value of each element. But again, we need to go back and improve the, the read and the, the, the input reg mesh and so on to make it to work. Because now this code in the main works, but uh, the outside part the inter interface to this main code has to be corrected or adjusted accordingly. Elastic modulus and Poisson ratio, POI, SSON ratio. There it is. Okay, so right now the, the code is capable of dealing with more than one material. So you can have like how as many number as uh, uh what is that uh, as many number as the n e l e okay <laughs> Tot equal to number of element if you want yeah. and okay here i think it is it is pretty much done the 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 a, a few things uh, first uh, so the read has to read the EPRP that's one thing the test uh, the input file has to account for but the part that we account for the elastic modulus has to be carried out uh, separately in probably Microsoft Excel generate it up and then uh, paste it paste it in uh, that's the case uh, the reg match, uh, we might need to spare the space and then we're going to say that copy from Excel and paste it here. Uh, so it is uh, going to be a more foolproof, right? Uh, this Q shape actually is open because I, I, I just want to plot the icon, icon modes, icon vector of the stiffness matrix that we, 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 we just we we talk about the spurious mode, but we have not seen the the spurious mode yet. So that's what I I prepare. But okay, we don't have that much time to to cover to that far, right? So this part is okay. Uh, the just a few things I mentioned. I I will I will just do it to 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 make the code a little bit more complete and ready for us all to play. Uh, so uh, we're going to see you next time. This is 10.13 already. Yeah. 
going to see you next time on Monday. We're going to continue a little bit with uh, most of the code completed, and we're going to play. I, 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 I actually really want to see if uh, we have two material like steel and concrete. And uh, well, and then we can visualize and see the see the stress level, uh, and we'll see. Okay, <laughs> would it would it be very interesting? Okay, so okay, uh, I think uh, we ran out of time, of course, for sure. I will finish the class here. We'll upload the video soon. Uh, today, of course, and we're gonna see each other on Monday. The material will be also uploaded onto the Google Drive. Bye bye. Have a good day.